Can you hear me on Zoom? Yes, we can hear you on Zoom. Nice, nice. Perfect. Okay, um, so how is the P4 assignment coming along? Is it, is it good? Um, is everyone working well in the teams? Uh, have, have you all sort of like made, started making some agents? Yeah? Uh, did you have a question? No, okay, okay. Um, oh yeah, yeah. The final agent? Yeah, it's Wednesday, uh, 9 a.m., Fatima. Is that I have to change the canvas? Yeah, so uh, we definitely need them by the time the lecture uh, uh, is well at five. So I mean, we need the results, final results by then. Um, yeah, Wednesday, Wednesday, yeah. So, so you, uh, Tuesday night in that case, even. So I think it should be Tuesday night because we have to run the evaluations overnight. So, so actually, yeah, yeah, basically tomorrow. So, so tomorrow will be the last day. Tomorrow night will be the last day of submitting the agents because we have to run the evaluation overnight and, uh, and we'll present them on Wednesday in the final lecture. Yes. What, what specific time is midnight? So we, let's, let's do 11 p.m. Let's do 11 p.m., yeah. Yeah, does that work? Nine a.m. on Wednesday. Huh, huh. Well, it is, uh, we would have to run it during the day. The evaluation. Um, I don't know. Maybe uh, if it. Uh, uh -huh. We need to discuss this. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'll get back on that. I'll get back on that. I, I'll try. I, uh, yeah, yeah. We need to discuss it. We need to see if we can run the evaluations on, uh, from 9 a.m. until, until 4, something like that. Because oh, yeah. it's just post on the end of this entire Yeah. Like yeah, 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 yeah. I get it. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, okay, okay. Okay, we'll uh, we'll look into it. I'll yeah, well, I'll ask and look into it. Okay, um, anything else? No. Um. So. So so as as we discussed today in the second. Oh yeah. What was the issue again that two teams have? Oh, hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, um, good, good. Okay, so we have a, set, a quiz in the second half of the class. And um, in the first half, so in the first half, I wanted to go through what's called variable elimination in the uh, Bayesian networks. And we'll, we'll, this will be one of the, uh, the last 
key concepts we'll learn in this course. Well, the, the final lecture we will have on Wednesday is more like a wrap up course um, about everything we covered. So, but, but this would be, this will be the last important concept. So let's let's get through this. Um, before we start, let, let me make so a few announcements. So okay, so so this is due Wednesday. Well, we'll we'll come back on that so if it's nine a.m. or night before. The report is due on Sunday, so you have to write a report for for this as well. So don't forget that. Um, worksheet six is due on Friday. But some of uh, some of you might have done it already, um, and also please uh, fill out uh, the surveys, the SA set surveys. So right now we have around seventeen percent completion rate. Uh, seventeen percent of you have finished it. So please, please try to submit it by by the end of the course. Um, I'll remind again on a, on on Wednesday. Um, okay, so. Um, so today we're going to cover two key things. So we're going to review what we what we briefly mentioned last 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 time um, on uh, the separation, um, and then we're going to talk about variable elimination. So let, let, let's try to see. So so a bit of recap: what I started mentioning last last time, but I didn't go into too much detail, was this idea of the separation in uh, Bayesian networks. Is basically when when you have some nodes that are under some conditions, they become independent. For instance, if you have this kind of Bayesian network, you have a battery, uh, radio, spark plugs, and so on, where it's, it's about a car, whether it's gonna move or not. Um, we can have a path, basically. We can have a path and, and we have multiple types of nodes on the path. And we'll see very shortly what, what, why this is important. So, but let's first go through the types of nodes. So we can have a linear node where basically, for example, spark plus, where basically we have uh, a line coming in and a line coming out on this path, basically. So, so we have uh, incoming and outgoing uh, arrows from this node. We have a diverging node where basically the two, two arrows diverge from that particular node. They, they come out. Um, like, for example, this, this node is the parent of two, these two other nodes. And we have something called converging. So we have a, a node where the paths of two, two arrows on the path converge on, on this node on start. They both point into it. Now, this, this is important because um, they will have different behaviors on independence, these different nodes. For example, so given a set of evidence nodes, E, Two belief, so here two, two uh, beliefs will be connected by an undirected path are independent if one of the three conditions or the three conditions hold. So if, if, if a node is on the path is linear and in E, so this is a linear node. And if this node is in the evidence nodes, so by, and by evidence node, we mean that for example, the node has been instantiated with a particular value. We gave it a value. It's not unknown anymore. If, if it is, so if, if, if a node is on the path and is instantiated, is in the evidence set of nodes, then um, we have basically any, uh, for example, radio is independent from gas because it's blocked. This path is, we say, is blocked by this particular node, by spark plugs, because it's linear. So, so any any other nodes in the path, for example, like bat on 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 two different sides of this, basically. So battery will become independent from starts, battery will be independent from gas, and so on, because the spark plugs node, this one, is instantiated. It blocks off the the information being uh, traveling on the on this path. And the same thing holds for uh, conditions two and three, where, for example, the node is on the uh, on the path. On the path is diverging, in this case the battery, for example, it's the diverging node, and is instantiated. We we know the value of the battery. In that case, it blocks off again the same thing. It blocks off information traveling uh, from, for example, radio will become independent of spark plugs given battery. So then, if if, if battery is given, it's fixed. Then it blocks all, off information traveling through the path. While on the other hand, in question three. If a node on the path is converging um, and not in the evidence node, then 
the, these become independent. So, so for, uh, for example, for the case of start, it, it must not be instantiated. That's when they're independent. So, so right now, if we don't know anything about start, then spark plugs will be independent of gas. If we know something, if, if, it, uh, if we know the value of spark plugs, then they become dependent. So basically, this is the this is the it's flipped here in this case in condition three. So basically, if if starts if this node starts is instantiated, then these the parents become dependent to each other. They, you can think of it; they become correlated. If we know the value, it's something. Uh, it can be a bit counterintuitive, but it's exactly what happens. You can think of it as um um say intuitively um, this node starts can be caused either by spark plugs or uh, by gas. Maybe let's say it's an exclusive or relation either by one or by the other. And if we know the, uh, then if, uh, then if you know this happened, if this event happened, the starts happened, then, and if we know gas didn't happen, then we know something about the other variable. It's basically, it, it makes them completely correlated. If, 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 if the, the, the node starts is, is instantiated, is known or is measured. Any questions? No? Does it make sense what I, what I mean by evidence nodes here? Yes? It's similar to the, yeah, it's, it's a similar type of network. Yes, yes, like the alarm one, yeah. The dependence, these ones, these three. Earthquake. Exactly, correct, 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 correct. Yes, yes, exactly. If we observe, if because the, this is a child, also, so whenever you have um, a converging path, so like this, so you have two parents uh, causing a particular child. If if you instantiate this, if this becomes instantiated, then these two um, become dependent to one another the parents, y yes. Um, yeah, I think so, I think so. It, it's kind of, it, it, it's, it's, it's really like a hand wavy argument. We don't have or exclusive or see, we have probability tables, you know, probability. So, um, they they become correlated essentially the probability that you, you cannot um, yeah you cannot yeah but the, the definition remember the definition of independent is is what a is independent from b if um, or let, let, let's say not even definition one of the uh, conditions if if the joint factorizes as the as the part of the marginals p of a times p of b. Um, so the joint distribution factorizes the product of, of the two marginals, P of A and P of B. So, um, so this is what happens. So then they become essentially, they, this, this breaks off, the structure breaks off when this happens, when this becomes instantiated. And this is also called the collider when they basically the two paths collide on, on it. So, um, so it's called different names in different literatures. So, um, yes. Value is known, or even you have some some more information that just completed uh, uh, unknown. Like for example, you have some strong evidence towards a particular yeah value. Yeah. Any other questions? So this is the case if this is instantiated. In the case where, for example, we have the same structure again, but we don't know anything here. We have absolutely no information about what the value here is. Then they they are independent. This one, this one, this one is independent from this one, and this this holds. So this this is the this is a special case. This this third 
third element is a special case. It, it's completely different from the other ones. You will have a, uh, yeah, you will have a dependence one, one instantiate. You say, I, I want you to, to keep this in mind. So really one thing to, to take away here is that the converging paths do, um, do make the parents basically uh, um, dependent if, 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 if this one is instantiated. Okay. Um, so here's uh, basically going through the example. So gas and radio are independent given evidence on spark plugs. So, so radio and gas, again, everything on, on, the, on the path, but on different sides. We have to be on different sides of this node. This is the node that blocks off the information passing from one to the other. Again, gas and radio are independent given evidence on battery. Again, if we block battery, then everything you cannot, all information cannot travel anymore. Gas and radio are independent given no evidence, but they are dependent given evidence on starts or moves. If we have some evidence on starts and moves, they become independent. Okay. Let's take another example. So what about, what about this graph structure? Is, is a V independent from Z given T? Anyone? This is V, V is here, T is here. No, sorry, Z is here. And, and, if, and if we instantiate T, do they become independent? Yes, yes, exactly. Question there. Um, is U independent from V, given nothing? Why? Yeah. No, um, why? There's, there's no information on W. If we have no information on the, on, on the, on the node, then they are independent. The parents are independent. If we have no information on W, let's say this is W. Yeah. Oops. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they are independent, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Because we have no information out whatsoever. So, so in this case, you see, it's not given. It's not given W, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. Does that make sense? Shall I explain it again? Yeah, I hear some not. Okay, so it makes sense. Okay. Um, what about these ones? Is U independent from V given X? Yeah, yeah, exactly. What about the final one? Yeah, dependent, yes. Because now W is instantiated. If we were given Y, yeah, yeah. So um, let's do that on the board. Um, if we were given,
let's do the subgraph. So U V W X and Y. So, uh, so you 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 were saying what happens if we given a Y, no? Yeah, it could Y affect so. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So. Um, Yeah. So if we instantiate, if we instantiate y, if we fix y, then x and w become dependent. Yeah. Yeah, um, good question. I don't know, let me think. Uh, there's also there's also these other paths, so they're independent. I don't know, I'm sorry, I, I need to I need to look into it. I, I actually don't know. Uh, I don't want to say something that would be wrong. So um, I have to think, uh, I, I don't know what happens if we go higher up in, does it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I... Yes. Uh I think I think it's because of this. I think so. Yes. I actually don't remember. Um but I think the rule 3 says any descendant in E. So basically I think this 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 counts descendant. So basically since since y is a descendant of x but not directly influencing i think that that would count basically based on rule three in descendants um the the thing that complicates it is well yeah yeah no yeah yeah they're they are dependent they're dependent yeah okay um so they are so they are dependent because of rule three and because uh y is a direct descendant of u and v okay now how do we compute the probabilities now uh this is the main question so how do we do inference on on these on these models so so there's two types of, in general, in 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 Bayesian network, there's two types of inference methods. One is what I call like um, exact inference methods, and these could be algorithms. For, these are algorithms that compute exactly the the inference numbers, like the, the, for each of these probabilities. And and one of the, the, there's two main algorithms. One is called the variable elimination algorithm, which we'll go through, and the, another one is called the junction tree algorithm that is not covered in in this course. Um, but we, we also have some other types of uh, inference schemes, for example, that are, that are basically doing approximate inference. And these basically approximate the, um, the exact probability values. So um, these would be, for instance, um, stochastic simulations or sampling methods or Markov chain Monte Carlo methods and variational algorithms. So they, they find an, an approximate inference. They, they, um, and this is especially important when the problem uh, or the, the network is intractable. Um, and, and in some some types of algorithms, you won't have a tractable 
exact inference. So you have to rely on approximate inference. But okay, but let's let's talk about the variable emission algorithm. So let's let's take a simple simple graph. X one goes into X two. How do we compute P of X two, the marginal on X two? We apply the marginalization formula. So we simply take P of X two. We we write it as a joint P of X one comma X two, and then we marginalize over X one over the other variable, and then we apply chain rule. And we break up the joint into the prior over x1 and yeah, uh, or margin over x1 and the condition of x2 given x1, summed over x1. Okay. So, so this is our case. So, so, and in practice, even more, how do we actually compute it? Well, for in the case where our x's are Boolean uh, variables, so they take true or false. Again, we, we take both cases. So basically we take P of X2 is equal to P of X1 times P of X2 given X1 plus P of not X1 times P of X2 given not X1 because this was a summation over X1. From the previous slide, if you remember here, we were summing over X1s and this means over all the values that X1 can take. And, and, and for example, if X1 is just true or false, then it can it will just take yeah it will just be these two terms p of x one and p of not x one and the same similar thing we can put p of not x two as similarly as p of x one times p of not x two given x one and so on and okay um, so this is this is for the simple case so again given this formula now what if we add another variable x three now what happens how do we compute P of X3? So P of X3 is uh, a marginal of P of X2 comma X3, and then we marginalize over the X2 variable. And then we apply chain rule, uh, P of X2, uh, which is equal to P of X2 times P of X3 given X2. But now we already know P of X2. We just computed it previously, you know, on the previous slide, which was this one, this formula here. So we can com combine them together to get P of X3. We can, we can replace the formula of P of X2 in here, in this other one above. And we do that for multiple steps. And for uh, up until we can, we can do, for example, n different variables, X1, X2, up to Xn, where we can put P of X1, P of X2, P of X3, and so on. And each of the terms, we compute them using the previous one. So P of X i plus one is, is um, P of Xi plus, no, times P of Xi plus one given Xi. And then this is all marginalized over Xi. Yeah. So, so here with this, uh, this algorithm, so each step generally costs us um, an order of complexity that is given by the by, by, by simply by calculating the, this, this product basically for all the values. So, so we take the values, all the values that Xi can take, all the values that Xi plus one can take. And then, uh, and this is how much one step costs us because we have to do this, these products and then the summation. So we, we, we do it over all these potential values of Xi and Xi plus one. And how, and, and given that we have N steps, to do like to do this, how what will be the order of complexity? Anyone? If we repeat this n different times, yeah. Um, it, it will be so. So one one step is this. Now, if we have n steps, yeah. So it will be O of N, but it's N times this, because for each 10 times this value, value of Xi, value of Xi plus one. So in, in the case, if, if our values are, uh, if our values, if our variables are Boolean, they can take only two values. So this is two here. Now that is the cardinal of, of the set of values, the number of elements. So this will be two times two. So four operations, because I have to do all of all the combinations. And if you have n steps, like n is equal to 100, you have 100 times 4, which is 400 operations you have to do. 
for this. And and what was what was the order of complexity um, if you did, did it naively? If if you compute this, um, these are the probability tables. It was all two to the n. It was exponential because we had to go through all the all the cases. Um, you know, all the different types of assignments you can make to each of the n variables. So it would have been two to the power of a hundred, which which would have been much more than this. Let me see what time. I'll take I'll take five more minutes and then we'll stop and we'll we'll take a break and we'll start a quiz. But let, 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 let's see this. Uh, how elimination works. So, um, so imagine you have a chain of of, of these variables a, b, c, d, e, and now imagine you want to compute the marginal on e on the last variable e, right? So you simply take the how do you do it? You simply take the joint of all the variables p of a, b, c, d, e, and marginalize all the variables that don't that are not, not here basically to get rid of them to get rid of a, b, c, d. So you marginalize, which means you sum over all these variables. And so that, that's the first step. So we have P of E is equal to the marginal of the full joint. And then we break up the joint into conditional probabilities into, into first. So this is, this is our network. So basically we start with the topmost node, A, P of A, then P of B given A, P of C given B, P of D given C, and P of E given D. And again, we sum over all these, over all the nodes. And then here's the, the key step is that once we have these summations, we have four different sums over four different variables, A, B, C, D. We can shift some of these terms. So these ones, we can shift them to the left. We can shift them before the sum over A. And the reason why we can do that is because they don't depend on A. And this is basically applying distributivity just in, 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 in the summation symbols. So we basically distribute the term, the, 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 these terms, these three terms, we distribute them before the summation over A, basically. So we shift them all the way. So, so now we see how the, these terms now got shifted before the summation of A. So we have sum of B, D, C, B, our terms that we distributed over, and then sum over A of P of A and P of B given A. And this is again, and, and this is a, a, a concept of the bound variables I was saying if some lectures ago. If in this case, um, the sum over A bounds this, these, these terms uh, because they contain the term A basically. So P of A is bound to this particular, um, variable and P of B given A is also bound to that because it contains that particular term. So we cannot shift, we, we won't be able to pull them out of the summation because they will become free variables and we cannot do that. But, but the other ones we can do, we can, we can distribute them. And this is the, this is the key idea of how we do, we will do elimination, you know, variable elimination in these chains. Um, So, and then we do the same thing for variable B. We, so, so this thing, sum over A, what we have from the last time, sum over A of P of A and P of B given A gives us simply P of B. And then we do the same thing over now over sum of B. We take out all the terms that do not contain B, which are these two here. And we shift them again, we push them before the summation. So we're left with sum over B of C given B times P of B, which is again, by definition, uh, this is P of C. And now we've also eliminated B and we keep doing this elimination up until we, yeah, we get to the very end. And this is called variable elimination in, in chains. So the general idea would be to write the query in this particular form. So you write it as the P of XI 
comma e is basically um, a sum over all the term over all the terms apart from xi because you have to sum sum over all the other ones and then you take um, the product over all these uh, tables probably conditional probability tables of xi given the parents because this thing this term product over i of p of xi given the parents of xi this gives us the full joint distribution. This gives us the exact full joint, but then we, we break it down as from the structure of the Bayesian network as uh, probability of each node given the parents, because this, this encodes the independent assumptions of the network. And then we marginalize over the rest of the variables. So in some sense, you can think of it as graphically as basically how you cross out the nodes, but in the end, it's just mathematics, it's just, at the end of the day, it's just mathematics that basically does the job. So basically, you know, we 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 can simply cancel these terms out and turn them into, for example, P of C, for example, and we can slide them and do these are mathematical operations that are allowed and that allows us to do exactly this. Um, yeah. So so we iteratively um, in this case we simply iteratively take. Uh, for example, the, the first summation over X2. So we take all the terms that do not contain X2 and put them before X2 here. And we add them and we, again, uh, we eliminate X2 and then we eliminate X3 and so on. Up until we finish. Any questions on this? Okay, Let, let's stop here and uh, take a five minute break and we'll start a quiz after. That this is. How would you prove that this is false? Because there's let's look at that. Let's look at that. Let's look at that. Yeah. I tried to ask you. What? Ask you. This one doesn't make any sense. Uh, this made no sense either because when I did it, when I did it, this happened. How can you like? How can you change if this is C, right? How can you change all of these to be C? Can you do that? Just if it, if it's uh, for all, if you send a main, yeah. Um, it depends. Let, let, let's talk it after because it will take a it will take a while. Yeah. Oh my God, why am I thinking spring here? Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, you want to uh, distribute half of them to, to that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we can, we can give them to, to people.
Hello everyone. Uh, can you quickly see the chart? There is a typo in the in the exam, and you can correct it by seeing the chart.
Hello, everyone. Uh, can you please again check the chat? Did you say something? Sorry. Uh, no, I was just uh, asking students to see the chat for the ah, correction. Okay. 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 Yeah. yeah.
Swati. Uh, yes. Hey, hey. Yeah. Thanks a lot for yeah, this. Hi. How are you? Are you okay? Yeah, of course. You're in a. You're yeah, in I'm. Yeah. Yes, yes, I'm in India. Yeah, yeah. Hope, so... hope things go well with the with the visa visa visa. Yeah. Um, yeah, ask... I've submitted it, so I will hear within two nice. to three weeks. Nice. nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, I got the submissions from all the students who did okay. online. Nice, nice. Yeah. Um, I just want to briefly yeah. ask you. So I just spoke to Fateme. Like, would you be able to help, um, help uh, help me uh, with um, designing a final exam, you and Fateme, just like you did last for last course? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course, of course, yeah. Because uh, Fateme yeah, said but, you can uh, work can tomorrow you... on it. Uh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I will uh, talk to her about this. And can you like tell us what kind of questions we need to add and what's the difficulty and all? Maybe yeah, I said, uh, it, it should I be the same I as the last year. Or... I thought a bit more difficult than the quizzes because I thought uh, Fatim was saying the last, uh, the final exam from last year was kind of similar to the quizzes, and I have to look on it. I haven't managed to, but um, okay. we can do a bit more difficult than that actually. Uh, not yeah, not not as easy because the quizzes are kind of easy. Uh, yeah. yeah yeah um okay maybe a bit more difficult yeah uh, we can mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah we can prepare a draft and we can send yeah. you and then we can make the changes yeah 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 and right. also we can make it uh, like the last ml course increasing the difficulty as the yeah, question yeah, proceeds. yeah 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 that, that also works yeah yeah that, that's a good idea okay sounds good yeah. sounds good okay yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, okay. Uh, hope things otherwise. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, this will be in touch. Bye bye. Yeah, okay. Bye bye.